Tivoli Storage Manager version 6 server to server communication. Understanding server to server communication. The list of topics we will talk about are why the need for server to server communication, configuring server to server communication, and putting server to server communication to work for you. Why use server to server communication? Server to server communication allows all TSM servers in your TSM environment to talk to each other and exchange information. This is useful when trying to utilize TSM features such as node replication, the use of a library manager, virtual volumes, or command routing. It allows the TSM administrator to take full advantage of many of Tivoli storage managed features. Also, server to server communication is a required component for certain features in TSM. Here is a list of services that require server to server communication. A library manager for drive sharing across your TSM servers. Node replication for moving data from a TSM server to another for DR purposes. Cross server command execution and virtual volumes. These next two slides will illustrate for you how having server to server communication in place can provide additional functionality for your TSM server. In the first illustration, we see that there's a tape library with four drives allocated to it. Two drives are dedicated to TSM Server 1, and two drives are dedicated to TSM Server 2. Without server to server communication in place, these servers cannot share drives amongst each other. There may be times where one of the TSM servers is idle and not utilizing the drives allocated to it, whereas the other TSM server is under heavy load with migration or reclamation processes and is maxing out the drives allocated to it. In this illustration, we see that we have server-to-server -server communication in place between the TSM server library manager and the TSM server client. Here, all four drives are allocated to the TSM server library manager. The library manager handles allocation of the drives to the TSM server library clients, and if a need arises for more than two drives to the library client, the TSM server library manager can allocate additional drives to that TSM server. This is not possible without server-to-server -server communication in place to allow your TSM servers to communicate with each other. Configuring server-to-server -server communication. Here are the steps required to configure your TSM server for server-to-server -server communication. Configuring the server is a relatively straightforward process and does not require a restart of any of your TSM servers. In these examples, I'll use the term target server and source server to describe your TSM servers. These terms could be interchanged, but generally, target server would refer to the TSM server where data is being sent to, and the source server will be the server where data is coming from. For example, in a replication scenario, the target server will be the server where the data is being replicated to, and the source server will be the server where the data was originally backed up from. The first step required to configure your TSM server is to configure the server name, server password, high-level address, low-level address, and turn cross-define on on the target server. The server name can be found by querying the system on the TSM server. The server password in this case is unique and only used for server-to-server -server communication and will not affect any other passwords defined on your TSM server, such as admin passwords or client passwords. The high-level address is generally going to be the IP address of your target server. The low-level address will be the port used to communicate on, over that IP address. And cross-define on allows the target server to define itself to the source server so that server-to-server -server communication can be configured on both servers in one step. The second step is to configure the server name, server password, high-level address, and low-level address on the source server. Once those settings have been configured, you can run a define server command on the source server to establish communication. Here are the commands required to configure server-to-server -server communication on the target server. First run the set server name command, providing the name of the target server, then the set server password, provide the unique password that you choose for the target server, then set server high-level address command, providing the IP address of the target server, 
set server low level address, providing a TCP port that you're gonna use for communication, and then set cross define on. The commands for the source server are identical to the commands for the target server. The only difference is you do not turn cross define on. Cross define only needs to be turned on on one side of the pair of servers being configured for server to server communication. In this case, it was turned on on the target server. Now that you have all the parameters in place for server to server communication, it's time to establish connectivity between the source and target server. On the server that you've designated as a source server, you will run the find server command as seen here. Be careful when entering the variables here. Again, you'll be running this on the source server, but providing variables for the target server. For example, define server, target server name, high level address equals the target server IP address, low level address equals the target server TCP port, server password is a password that you set on the source server when configuring the parameters during this step to configure the source server. And choose the cross define option equals yes here to have the target server not only define a connection to the source server, but place a definition for itself on the source server. Once you've run the command, you should have successfully defined the source server to the target and vice versa. At this point, you should be able to verify that server to server communication is properly configured by running the query server command. If it has been configured properly, you should see a listing for the source server in the output for the query server command, if running this on the target server. If running this command on the source server, you should see a listing for the target server. If you have more than two servers in your TSM environment and you wish to configure additional servers for server-to-server -server communication, just follow the steps you used to configure the target server in the previous slides. There is no need to do anything on the source server as all the parameters you configured will remain in place for configuring additional servers. Here are the only additional steps required to configure additional servers for server-to-server -server communication. On the next server that you designate as a source, set the variables just as you did in the previous steps, setting server name, server password, server high level address, and server low level address. Then as we did before, run the define server command on the source server, providing the parameters that we defined earlier for the target server. Once you run a define server command on the target server, you can again verify the connectivity by running the query servers command. If you run the query server command on the source server, you should see an additional reference to the new TSM server that you just defined. Now that you know how to set up server-to-server -server communication, here are some examples of things that you can do to utilize the new functionality that you've implemented. Setting up these features is outside of the scope of this video, but here are some links to information to help you get started. Some of the things you can do as I previously discussed, are setting up a TSM library manager, setting up node replication to have node data sent over to another TSM server, preferably off-site for disaster recovery purposes. Command routing allows you to send commands to other TSM servers so there's no need to drop out of the admin session that you're in to log on to another TSM server to run commands. And virtual volumes allows you to store data on another TSM server without the need to copy the data to tape and send off-site. This data can be database backups, node data, or even volume history files. These are just some of the examples of how having server-to-server -server communication in place on your TSM servers can be very useful. So in summary, a few things to note in regards to setting up server-to-server -server communication. First, you need to ensure that there is network connectivity between a source and target server for this to work, as this is reliant on an IP network. Having server-to-server -server communication in place will provide additional functionality to TSM administrators, such as the use of a library manager or node replication. Additional steps may be required to set up target-to-target -target communication. All the steps outlined in this presentation allowed you to set up server-to-server -server communication between a target and a source. In order to set up communication between target to target, you will need to repeat some of the steps outlined above, designating one of the target servers as a new source and turning cross define on, and then repeating all the steps we've previously done. Check the video comments for links to additional resources 
that you can utilize to enhance the functionality of your TSM server with server-to-server -server communication. Thank you very much for watching.